Hi, my name is Bernie Wu. I'm the VP of Business Development for Menbridge, and I'm here to present our perspective on how CXL will change the data center. As mentioned in another presentation, CXL is a game changer for our industry. It provides a standard way of interconnecting <coughs> over the PCIe bus, an increasingly diverse set of processors, accelerators, and, and memory types, all with memory coherency. The implications of this transition for computer memory is tremendous, beginning with a new class of CXL 1.1 type three <coughs> connected memory expansion cards that will start to ship later on this year. Later implementations of the CXL specification will allow memory devices to become independent clusters connected over CXL enabled switch fabrics. At that point, memory will truly become a first class citizen in the data center. But hardware innovation is just the beginning of this revolution. A robust amount of middleware software is also needed to orchestrate and manage this multi-tier hierarchy to make it consumable by applications. Until now, Memverge has been pioneering software-defined memory, which we define to include memory pooling, virtualization, profiling, policies, and automated tiering services. Currently, the tiering services are between DRAM and persistent memory, both on the DDR bus. <clears throat> We have also introduced the industry's first high-speed memory snapshots for, for capturing both the machine and process state. This combined with integration with file, cloud, and scheduler resources allows us to provide robust checkpointing and res restoration of applications that may not have been designed for fault tolerance. In addition, we've introduced a memory-based object storage layer to allow heterogeneous applications to share data between each other without the need to revert to data storage. There are a wide variety of memory bound applications which we have found can benefit from memory tiering and checkpoint restore services, both on premise and in the cloud. This slide highlights some of those use cases that we've been working on, which we also believe will be some of the first to take advantage of CXL based memory expansion. First is genomics where both secondary and tertiary analytics uh, requires a huge amount of memory, EDA and CAE, simulation and modeling work, AI, ML analytics, deep learning training, uh, which is typically <coughs> memory bandwidth constraint, and batch and interactive development environments. Media and entertainment, we see opportunities in simulation, rendering, and special effects. HPC, scientific HPC, simulation and modeling, financial service area, we see uh, analytics, uh, memory-based analytics for decision support services and all low latency messaging. Uh, in memory data, we see opportunities to consolidate nodes, improve overall performance, and also uh, accelerate backup and recovery processes. And in the cloud, of course, opportunities to do snapshots of virtual machines and then also provide spot instance services for non-fault tolerant workloads. This next slide summarizes what we see to be the benefits of CXL, particularly computer memory use cases and memory bound applications. First and foremost is that we now have a single industry-wide standard that will allow everybody to participate in. The first beneficiaries we see of this memory bound HP, <coughs> excuse me, the first beneficiaries we see for CXL will be users of memory bound HPC and AI ML applications. These folks can use Excel 1.1 servers and expansion cards later on this year to start expanding DRAM capacity on a per server basis while also increasing memory bandwidth. As CXL matures and propagates, we also see these additional benefits arising. For the cloud, we see overall improvement of utilization and <clears throat> efficiency of heterogeneous computing environments. In the area of composability at the hardware level, we see memory becoming a first-class citizen, becoming consolidated into centralized pools. In the area of collaboration, we see uh, sharing of data across applications and servers. In the area of concurrency, we see the ability to run concurrent heterogeneous processes on the same in-memory in data sets at the same time in order to reduce overall wall clock time. And in the area of caching, we see 
the ability to reduce the movement of data to and from storage as a result of having larger pools and caches, including persistent ones. However, getting HPC and AI ML applications and their corresponding pipelines to benefit from Excel's new memory tier will present some challenges. Over the years, many data centers have transitioned to be able to manage servers, compute, and now even cloud native applications, somewhat like cattle in a highly commoditized fashion. Such a transition has not occurred for HPC applications because of the uniqueness of their use cases and associated memory access and behaviors. They still need to be treated as unique pets. Many also cannot be easily refactored because they are the reference basis for much scientific research. Hence, a transparent approach to memory management is often called for if one wants to improve the performance of these memory bound applications. An example of a pet I'd like to illustrate is where this leading metagenomics application called Metaspades, used for analyzing biomes. This chart shows this, this application's CPU, memory, disk read, and disk write behavior over the course of this application's execution. This application can easily take several days to execute as well. As you can see, the application cycles through phases of being both compute and memory bound and then IO bound. And thus far, we've been able to, despite this application's behavior, use persistent memory tiering to extend the ability for scientists to analyze the complexity of biomes without needing to change any code in this application. A link to the paper uh, we published on this is listed below. We think the first step in CXL adoption will also be to achieve, achieve application transparency. In other words, to get H targeted HPC and AI ML applications to run faster, cheaper, and better without modification of their code. So during this pre-CXL launch period, we have been involved in modeling application and, and, and automatic, uh, automated memory turning in several ways. First, by characterizing the lifting of the memory capacity constraints using combinations of DRAM and highly, higher density persistent memory. Second, by using remote NUMA DRAMs as a proxy for CXL 1.1 memory expansion cards because CXL 1.1 latency is expected to be roughly equivalent to one NUMA hop. We then have been characterizing the impact on applications of various types of pooling, profiling, tiering ratio, policies, and data placement approaches uh, toward memory tiering. This next slide shows how we model CXL 1.1 using a two socket server in a spam process to assist in modeling slow remote memory, uh, while at the same time running the benchmark on a local NUMA socket. As you can see, the latencies we're measuring are roughly those of what we would expect for CXL expansion cards on the order of 300 nanoseconds. We are also investigating the benefits of using hardware-based profiling tools, such as AMD's instruction-based sampling. What we are looking at is a frequency distribution of memory accesses across a memory address space using a Gaussian distribution. This is seen as that dark blue trace. The light blue trace represents the data collected from the instruction-based sampling uh, mechanism and the rectangular outline represents a binary representation of what our profiling determines to be the addresses of the hottest data and th that of course should be placed in the fastest tier. What we have found by using such a hardware assisted profiling capability is that it can help us achieve about a 10% performance or bandwidth improvement over our native profiler design uh, using this example here of a one to three ratio of local and remote memory. Memverge has also been busy building tools to make it easy for partners to profile applications and processes and determine whether they are going to be good candidates for either use with persistent memory or CXL memory tiering. 
The green line shows the total memory allocated over time, and the red areas show the fraction of hot or active memory. As can be seen from these two examples, the application on the right is a far better candidate for taking advantage of either type of tiering without impacting its overall performance. When it comes to deployment considerations, there are multiple ways that our user space memory machine software can be deployed to provide automatic, uh, automated memory tiering services for targeted applications. And those applications can be running in either bare metal, container, or virtual machines. We've also done integration work to make sure our software can be deployed automatically at scale under so-called uh, Loki or Linux OpenStack Kubernetes infrastructure platforms. Among other things, our approach facilitates isolation of memory tiering between neighboring processes and use of varying ratios of memory tiering depending on the application or process profiles. I'd now like to conclude with the following comments. First, CXL will help revolutionize data center architecture, beginning with memory. Memory becoming a first-class citizen, providing more bandwidth, varying latencies, varieties, and degrees of composability. Second, we see CXL <clears throat> helping to accelerate many HPC and AI ML application workflows, providing faster time to insight. Third, we see software defined memory to be an essential component in providing provisioning and managing of various CXL memory pools and optimizing the overall behavior of an application uh, in workflow pipeline. Lastly, we look forward to partnering with you and the rest of the industry to get CXL launched and to change, to, to help us shape the future of big memory. Thank you and enjoy the rest of this conference.